so I, since I'm on kind of a Celtic tangent today, I thought I would do um, some Celtic books in my book review series. So um, these are only the ones that I have. I've read a few others and borrowed them from roommates and stuff, but um, to be honest, they weren't amazing. Uh, I think they were both by DJ Conway. I think it was like Celtic Myth and Magic and Glamoury or something. Maybe one of them wasn't by DJ Conway, but I don't remember. <laughs> so clearly they didn't really mean a lot to me, but they had lists of god and goddesses and that was about all I got from them. I wouldn't really recommend them. Um, I found Magic of the Celtic Otherworld by Steve Lemire's at a psychic festival, actually. Um, there was a bargain bin of books and I just started digging through it and it took me like half an hour to actually find anything worth buying that wasn't by like, I don't know, Fiona Horn. Um, and I actually really love this book. I've been looking for a few other books by him and they're all on my like Amazon wish list, which is now like eight pages long, all of pagan books. We'll see if I ever get through all those. <laughs> um, but I really like it. It starts kind of off it kind of dry because it just takes you through all the mythological cycles and the history. But if you can get through that, which is really beneficial, it's just kind of written in a very matter-of-fact tone. Um, then there are some very good exercises, some very good history about Celtic spirituality, and it's just a really awesome resource. And... Um, I'd really recommend it. This is the book I mentioned yesterday by DJ Conway, Celtic Magic. Um, I still have not finished it. I keep trying to force myself to, but I'm not able to get past the point where she like insinuates all sorts of things that absolutely never happened. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't recommend this one, like, like at all, at all, at all. Um, so, yeah. Then there is another one by DJ Conway, by Oak, Ash, and Thorn. Uh, I picked it up at Half Price Books, I think, just because it was, like, six dollars. And I was mildly interested. I'm trying to read a bit more about druidry, because... I think it could be benefit my ritual practice, and I think it could benefit any Celtic Wiccan's ritual practice to learn about a little bit about druidry. Personally, I don't have a big, very great understanding of it, and I, I'd really like to. So I picked this up, and it's Modern Celtic Shamanism. It's another one, as it is by DJ Conway, that kind of made me angry because there are some really gross historical inaccuracies, and, um, so I haven't really gotten far in that one either. But there are, I will admit, some good activities and exercises in it that I've done. Other than that, I haven't found much of value in it. This was the textbook for my study abroad class in Ireland, um, Malachi McCourt's History of Ireland. And I'd really recommend it because it obviously takes you through the entire history of Ireland. Um, obviously this is just for Irish Celt Celtic practitioners, I guess, but I mean it could benefit any Celtic practitioner. Um, it's Personally I'm just fascinated by Irish history in general, so <laughs> there's that. But it's written fairly well, and well, obviously Malachi McCord, but um, it's really easy to follow, and I, I just really liked it. I was one of the few that actually read the textbook for the for the study abroad course, so. I have Celtic Folklore Cooking. Um, I picked this up at a pagan shop a few months, a few years ago, actually, just because we had parties for PSA, Pagan Student Association, like, every few months, and I was running out of stuff to make and I wanted some recipes. But it's actually really awesome. It'll take you through the seasons and it'll give you recipes for all the sabbats. And then with each recipe there's a little story or a little blurb about the history of the dish. It's it's just really fascinating because it'll take you through the 
the cultural aspects of the dish. And obviously, since cooking is fairly central to every culture, it's good to know, and it's good. It's a good window into that culture. Uh, Celtic Wicca by Jane Rayburn is actually a pretty good book. Um, it's fairly simplistic. It's pretty much a 101 book for Celtic Wicca, or Wicca in general with a Celtic slant. But, um, so I enjoyed it. It had some really good points, but it wasn't horribly in-depth. Um, so there's that one. And... The Encyclopedia of Celtic Myth and Legend by John and Caitlin Matthews. I have barely opened this book because, I don't know, I don't even remember why I bought it. It was a half-price book, so it was probably a, a tend-to-buy things at half-price books just because they're at half-price books and they're like four dollars when I really don't need them. But it's not... I mean, it's good if you really, really know what you're looking for, but other than that, not really. I I'm Right now I found a website that has all of the Celtic myths and things like that in order, and I like that because, well, it's still confusing, but it's less so than, I guess, weeding through an encyclopedia to find what I want. Um, it's well written though, and it has fairly good explanation. That's what I got for you there. But I guess if you don't want to go through the entire mythological cycle and you really know what you're looking for, then this would be beneficial. And finally, Kindling the Celtic Spirit by Mara Freeman. This is an excellent resource. Um, I got it at a pagan store downtown one day with PSA because pretty much all we did was shop together <laughs> when we went on field trips. But it'll take you through all of the Sabbaths and all the seasons and gives you myths and stuff to make and it'll have translations to Gaelic for you and all sorts of stuff. It has a meditation for every month. And, and they're very well written meditations. I really like them. And then it'll have like something about tree, a tree every month, something about an animal. It's just a really good like starting point if you're learning about uh, the Celts so that you can continue your research from there um, and find what interests you, I guess. So. Those are my Celtic books. I really don't have that many. I'm realizing this now. And I'm hoping to build my collection soon. Um, but those are a good starting point, at least. And I'd really urge you, I guess cause it's becoming more and more of a pet peeve of mine, that people will say, like, when asked what your pantheon is, they'll say, what, I'm Celtic. Like, you have to realize there are, there's a Welsh pantheon, an Irish pantheon, um, and then, like, all the, like, all the other ones, like, seriously, there are at least five or six, and you kind of really have to know what your, what your area of interest is in, in before you can really go forward. So, um, I'd recommend for that the basic neo-pagan Celtic books, like, um, like Glamoury or Celtic Myth and Magic, I guess, unfortunately, because they'll kind of cover the broad spectrum of them and you can kind of pick and choose what you actually like and what you don't and then go from there and find your pantheon. I mean, I'm not saying you have to specialize in a pantheon, I'm really not, but Celtic is not a pantheon, um, and just be aware of that. <laughs> and it'll be easier for you to get help from other people if you can be more specific about what your, where your interests lie. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.